While southern parts of the state were encased in ice over the weekend, there were those for whom snow was the biggest issue. Just check out these pictures sent to the Near Me section of our website. They include from our head of sales, Michael Malloy, who always has a can or two of Moxie, or in this case here, four, just to show <laughs> us how deep the snow got at his house. It's a good measurement tool. I like that. Yeah, they look like they're empties too, don't they? Just they, they like did. have I that think lighter one look to them. them. Yeah. Um, I, I would have much pro rather the snow in southern Maine, but we had significant ice. This was a lot. It was, uh, yeah. I'm going to show you some numbers here, and I just want to point out, I mean, the snowfall numbers are tremendous, right? Like, we talked about that on Friday. We thought uh, northern Maine and the mountains were going to get hammered by snow. Correct. Um, <clears throat> however, <coughs> excuse me. However, we did not expect this much ice. And if you go on my Twitter, you can see a whole nerdy explanation that unfortunately we don't have time for. And you can say mean things to me on Twitter, which is, that makes it easier too. But, but the ice amounts here are tremendous. And 0.7 is a, almost a catastrophic amount of ice. Anything over a half inch of ice is a ton. So even these numbers down here, a quarter inch, it was enough for those power outages, about 200,000. We did that with surface temperatures at 31 or 32. And that was the truly astonishing part of it. It's very hard to get ice to form at that temperature. We have two good recovery days. Today was one of them, and we're starting to see some clouds moving into down east Maine uh, and into the mid-coast as well. We'll see increasing clouds tonight, actually associated with a low that is way, way down here off the coast of the Carolinas. And notice it's actually sinking away from us, but it's broken a few clouds and a couple of um, areas of moisture off. It'll give us some showers starting tomorrow. So clouds increase tonight. It's not a particularly cold night along the coast where the power outages linger. Inland, it is colder in the 20s and some low 20s into the mountains. Tomorrow, we wake up, it's cloudy. Showers start working their way in, especially late morning into the early afternoon. They don't look that heavy, but a few of the showers come into the foothills and mountains a little bit into uh, a marginal air mass where there could be a little freezing drizzle just uh, in those foothills and mountains. It is going to be way, way lighter than what we dealt with on Saturday night. Showers continue for the rest of us Tuesday night and through the day off and on on Wednesday. So it's really just kind of an unpleasant midweek here. The showers continue temperatures in the upper 30s to around 40 degrees. And we transition from showers to more legitimate rain on Thursday as this front starts backing its way into Maine and it starts pushing northwest. So we may get into some heavier uh, periods of rain Thursday afternoon and Thursday night temperature profiles such that it is all rain this time around. And then we try to figure out what happens on Friday. The European model just pushes that front offshore, no big deal. GFS model develops a low along it and gives us more rain and snow in the mountains and a little bit of wind. So we'll have to figure that out. The GFS did just notch a pretty big victory with this last storm system. Guys, after all that, we do quiet down for the weekend. So that's the good news. Uh, we're in good shape. Well, I think Saturday afternoon, but especially for Easter Sunday, which looks like it'll be in the mid 40s or so with uh, a good deal of sunshine. So we do quiet down, but it's, it's not a week where we're going to get a lot of mm. sun. It's also not a week up until Friday, at least where it will hamper, you know, cleanup efforts. efforts. Clear. Okay. OK, Keith, thank you.